that has not only earned bowl eligibility, but has won seven games here in 2017. Florida wins the toss. They accept, and they want the football. This one bobbled in the end zone. It'll be brought out by Lemons, and he's got some room out to the 30-yard line or close to it, and that is where the Gators will take over. And for Florida, I think the biggest story this year outside of some of the injuries has been the quarterback situation. It all started with Felipe Franks off to a 2-1 and one start, and then the carousel began. You know, early on in this season, a lot of question marks about who was going to make, be able to go the distance under center for Florida. And we have seen three different guys now try their hand at it. Franks has had more cracks than anyone else starting six of the nine games. Malik Zaire injured last week versus South Carolina after two unsuccessful starts at quarterback. Well, Michael P. Ryan on that carry off the left side, gain of five. Once again, down on the sidelines is Dawn Davenport. Let's join her now. Hey, Dawn. Dave, a completely different Florida roster than what they expected out of fall camp. Today, the Gators have just 53 of a possible 85 scholarship players dressed. That means 32 guys we aren't going to see today because of injury or suspension. Coach Randy Shannon told us in his 26 years of coaching, never seen anything like it. So depth an issue, but leadership is an issue, guys. They have lost their alpha dogs, their leaders as well see how this holds up this team I mean it's it's you know FCS teams playing with 63 scholarships and here it is Florida in the Southeastern Conference just decimated 32 scholarship players out due to suspension or injury today that is playing with uh, more than an arm tied behind your back right and we talked with coach Shannon we said what's been the most difficult element of this and he mentioned it hasn't been the transition at the coaching spots it's been the injuries because of the lack of production and Don hit it. It's the leadership in a down year. Who do you rally around? That's the difficulty that Florida has had in their locker room. Third down and four coming up. Wide open, Brandon Powell. They have targeted him more than anybody on this team on third downs. That's the 20th reception on third down. For Mr. Powell. And no surprise there. And that'll be a recurring theme in this game. After only converting two third downs last week on 15 tries versus South Carolina, you go to your sure handed receiver in Brandon Powell, his 24th consecutive game with a catch. Now 117 career receptions for the senior out of Deerfield Beach, Florida. Franks, little shovel pass and That'll be caught by Siante Lewis. That'll be good enough for a first down and a pickup of 11. We ran a little mess route in front, nowhere to go. And so Franks had to improvise, stepping up versus the pressure and then switching hands. Great awareness by Franks to get it to that front hand. And just a little option pitch, flips it forward to Lewis to get yet another first down conversion. Just the sixth catch of the year for Lewis. Keep an eye on the first down production of the Florida offense. They struggled last week versus South Carolina, gaining positive yards. The Michael P. Ride inside the 35 as we have an opportunity to check your keys to the game. Well, for UAB, the idea would be to put the ball in Felipe Franks' hands and ask him to beat you with his arm, something where Florida has struggled all season. They've only eclipsed 200 yards in passing once this year and that was versus Tennessee in the offense for Florida see if you can't get Kadarius Tony some touches we know they're going to want to run the football but can you get number 17 the ball he is their most explosive playmaker on offense second down and seven Trey Massey He'll have another Gator first down, a pickup of nine and these positive yards Matt it's so important because last week against South Carolina Nine of their first 15 plays went for zero or no yards. Well, they're doing a great job early here with play design. And one of the reasons why Dre Massey was able to get upfield so ably there was because the second level of the Blazer defense bought on what is effectively a play action fake. You end up flipping to Massey on the, in the round, and there was a wide open space towards the boundary. On first down, here goes Tony. First time we get to see him and Tony, the true freshman at a Mobile, Alabama, will pick up three. 
last week. See Tony coming out there a little bit limping. We keep an eye on that. We just mentioned he might be a key to here. And as we came into this game, we knew that Tony effectively is the backup quarterback in this game. Only one scholarship quarterback available to the Gators and Felipe Franks. Been bothered by that shoulder, but he limps off the field on that carry. So another second down and seven coming up for Florida. That one is battered away at the last moment, looking for Tyree Cleveland. Darius Williams, one of those guys for the Blazer defense. He might project to play on Sundays. And always dangerous throwing in his direction. Four interceptions in the last five games, in four of the last five games. He's done an excellent job. Four interceptions on the year from his cornerback position. So now it's third down and seven. Ninth play of this drive coming up. Here's Brandon Powell right here. We've seen him targeted already. Franks going to the end zone, batted away. Freddie Swain twisting and turning. Bronte Harris on the coverage for the Blazers, and now it's fourth down, and here comes the kicking unit. Well, Florida going for all of it that time. Instead of gunning for a conversion, Freddie Swain being targeted in the end zone. You see Powell that was underneath. They're saying, at least the fans anyway, too much contact from Bronte Harris. Didn't allow Freddie Swain to make an adjustment to that ball in the air. No flag came out. And out comes probably the most consistent offensive weapon for the Gators and Eddie Pinheiro. Pinheiro, 11 out of 12 in the field goal department. This one splits the uprights from 39 yards out. He had from 29 to 37 last week at another one. He is Mr. Consistency, 86% for his Florida career. And the Gators with a nice opening drive put up the first points of the afternoon. They lead 3-0 here at the Swamp. SEC Network Football is brought to you by Clayton. Clayton Bill means built to last. Find your dream home at HavocMade.com. Oh, a perfect day here in Gainesville. The tailgate, get a little barbecue. That's a little nice little package he yeah, did, put oh, together that's there. Brilliant. Pretty solid. We're in the swamp. Dave Neal, Matt Stinchko, Don Davenport, Gators. Lead it three to nothing over UAB. About to get the football for the first time today. Blazers one win away from school record for victories. This one will settle at about the two yard line. And out over the 30. Well, Spencer Brown has been one of the best stories for UAB. A true freshman out of Kimberly, Alabama, has rushed for over 1,100 yards. And, you know, this team hasn't been on TV a lot, so people don't know about him. But this guy is the real deal. This is a guy who should be up for freshman All-American team consideration. When you look at what he's been able to do, true freshman year, we'll talk about a lot of JUCO transfers. This guy's an organic talent for UAB in their backfield, a bowling ball and a powerful runner. Good pass coming near side. Donnie Lee will pick up five. And here is the guy running this offense, A.J. Early, a redshirt junior out of Cumming, Georgia. He started at Middle Tennessee, then went to Mississippi Gulf Coast before finding his way to Birmingham, and he has just been solid in so many areas. Excellent runner, a guy that can throw with some efficiency, but they like to keep the ball in his hands on the ground. Trying to set up a little screen. Donnie Lee with a nice one-handed grab. He'll take it out over the 40. That'll be right on top of the first down line. See if they give him a little over it and they will that'll be a first down for the Blazers this is set up well nice patience by early excellent catch by Lee just to be able to field that screen pass and then muscles his way upfield to get the yardage needed inside handoff goes to Brown no gain on that play as we take a look at the keys to the game for the UAB offense. Well, the idea here is, look, Spencer Brown's an excellent runner, but he's not a speedster. You need to get him to that second level cleanly 
so we can have a head of steam and then for Florida keep an eye on the QB run game Herbley's not going to carry it a lot but they can use misdirection he's been very capable with his legs Marco Wilson comes up to make that tackle on Brown now it'll be third down for UAB who has been phenomenal in third downs this year top 10 in the country almost 48 percent conversion rate when you look at the last three games that they played 57 percent on third down conversions but this is not a comfort zone down in distance what Randy Shannon did not like what he saw there calls a timeout right before the snap prior to the snap fault correction prior to the snap timeout Florida they're so, first so we'll step aside as well third down and seven Blazers trying to keep the drive alive when we come back. Well, for UAB, their football program is still new. They were established in 1991 at the Division III level. Then they moved up to the FBS in 96, had four winning three uh, seasons through 2014, and then the hammer drop. In December of 2014, they announced the elimination of football, rifle, and bowling. But the community would rally. Not just the, the, the students, but everybody in Birmingham. They raised enough money to get the football program back. They got facilities built. And on August 29, 2016, the school broke ground on that football ops center. This year on September 2nd, they opened up a new campaign of UAB football, and it's been unbelievable. Seven wins on the year, facing a third down and seven. Early runs into his own man and is dropped at the line of scrimmage. Ran right into Malik Johnson, his right guard. Loss of two. Well, they tried to run the mesh underneath, expecting man coverage. It's a good man beater on the third down and didn't get the look that he wanted. Ended up having to hold on to that football. And one of the guys that's done an excellent job this year getting after the passer. Sacks are way down for Florida with only 18 coming into this contest. But at that time, able to get to Erdley, assisted by Johnson. Dixon will punt it away. Freddie Swain back to return punts today. Brandon Powell has had some issues holding on to the football, so the Gators going in a couple of directions. Swain and Gardner are going to be a couple of guys to return punts today. But Bill Clark took him to a bowl game in 2014, hung around for the two years there wasn't football. So back-to-back -back seasons, if you will, of bowl eligibility. They did not go to a bowl game in 2014, despite having six wins. But he said that he just got on his horse and started looking for players everywhere. And they found some, obviously. And he also mentioned, you know, the fact that there was so much notoriety about the way that program ended that it actually kind of put UAB on the map in some regards. These recruits, these players, they were aware of what was going on. There was some level of notoriety. UAB wants a timeout here. Timeout. UAB. 50 junior college players on this roster. Blazers to talk it over. Back in a moment. Welcome back to Gainesville. The Florida Gators have had to deal with a ton of injuries this season. Well, another one. They will be, at least for this offensive drive, without Kadarius Tony. He collapsed walking into the injury tent, spent quite a bit of time in that tent, came out, now has that ice on his left knee. His left shoe is off, sitting on the training table. Just one more to the list. First down and 10 for Florida. Took a helmet to the knee. Maybe if the knee pads covered his knee, it could have helped with that injury. They'll hand it off to P. Ryan, and he has flipped up over the 30. They'll spot it at the 31, a six-yard run. Broderick Thomas already with four tackles in that UAB secondary. It's not always ideal when your safety's coming up to make plays like that. And well, Michael P. Ryan is the guy that's going to have to kind of carry a lot of the mail in this game. We talked with Doug Nussmeyer yesterday. What were they going to emphasize offensively? And he likes the ability to run off tackle outside with all the turnover that they've experienced guard to guard from a personnel standpoint. Felt like the strength would be at their tackles and on the edges. Go with P. Ryan again, working that left side. And it works perfectly as they pick up six in a first down. Well, they've moved Martez Ivy, their left tackle, into left guard. And you can see why on that last play he did such a good job. 
driving the defensive tackle off of the line of scrimmage and then finishing physically at the end. You know, Ivy spent a lot of time this year at left tackle. The transition wasn't the smoothest. He's a good athlete, came out of a wing T system in high school. He's a really good puller, but you don't get a lot of pass protection reps in that type of a system. Franks going up top, far side, passes, caught around the 15 yard line. What a grab by Tyree Cleveland. 47 yards on the pickup. You see Cleveland a little bit hobbled, but manned up versus Bronte Harris. Wins right now off of the line of scrimmage with an outside release. Harris lucky to make that tackle. They've been without Cleveland a little bit this year, been nicked up a little. And after that play, he was kind of hobbled, made it to the opposite hash mark from where he made that catch. And you can see kind of gimping his way over before he finally went down. Caught the big 63 yarder to win the game versus Tennessee. He is the deep threat for the Florida Gator wide receiving core, but a guy that has had difficulty playing through some of these injuries. We're going to take a look and see if, in fact, Cleveland came up with this reception. You see Harris there making a desperation dive. And does he does the ground make contact when he doesn't have control of that football? The ball can contact the ground. He cannot aid you in making the catch. He dropped it. He loses control of this football. You can see it as he kind of rolls over right there. That ball came out. He gathers it back in quickly, but that ball moves significantly. Our referee David Smith on the headset around the 20 yard line in communication with our replay booth. I think that previous look at it told the story pretty well. And there's a lot of writing going on down in that area, so they're going to probably have to reset the football. And After further review, the receiver did not maintain possession through the catch, therefore, it's incomplete. Ball we placed at the 37 yard line on the left hash to be second down. Please reset the game clock to six minutes, 26 seconds. Six, two, six. Thank you. Boy, a little insult to the injury. Yeah, I'll say, quite literally. Good job kind of unwinding what that situation was because you're right, it's difficult when you've got the chains reset, the ball spotted. Make sure that you get the ball respotted where it originally was before the attempt was made. And of course, they're taping up Cleveland's ankle, or retaping his ankles anyway. An ankle injury has been kind of slowed the receiver of Gators. Two tight end look out of the pistol formation. Working the right side. P. Ryan is hit for maybe a yard. Actually, they're going to spot it back at the line of scrimmage, so nothing on that one. Fitz Mofor and Shaq Jones come up to make the play. Those are the two playmakers on the defensive side of the ball for UAB and you see the third down comparison. Now that defense has done an excellent job of forcing long downs of Florida offensively averaging 7.4 yards to go. That is a tall task when you're facing that distance to go on third downs for conversions. Gators averaging under 21 points a game 115th in the country. And there will be a flag, some movement on UAB up front. Garrett Marino. You know, it almost looked like Martez Ivy at left guard drew him off. Offside on the defense, number 44. Five yard penalty, third down. You know, Marino's a guy that's improved his play at nose tackle and watch the left guard. No, nah, you know, if anything, <laughs> Ivy is responding to Marino, who's coming hard on a slant. They were definitely going to pirate their defensive front and slant hard to the defensive right. So that'll make it third and five now from the 42 and a half yard line. Franks will throw. 
The pass is caught by Powell, and he'll have enough for the first down. 21 targets now on third down to Brandon Powell. And, you know, the thing of it is is that you know where they're going to try to go with the football. If it's an obvious passing down, looking for a conversion, you pick up some easy, easy yards with the encroachment penalty. But you can see 21 times this season where you're going to go to number four, and already twice in this game he's been able to convert. First down and 10 from the 47 and a half, 48 yard line. Franks, boy, has a lot of time, lofts it up. Looking for Powell, no flags. Will Dawkins on the coverage for the Blazers. Yeah. You know, Powell, his route was definitely disrupted by Dawkins. I'm surprised this didn't draw a flag. As Dawkins comes up from his safety position, you see his right arm, he just reaches out. It didn't look like it was much, but it definitely, it bumped Powell off. He couldn't run through that ball. No flag comes out. And you look at an incomplete pass on first down, obviously setting you down behind the down and distance. We mentioned the first down efficiency, a point of emphasis for the Florida Gator offense. So on second down and 10, it's Piran off the left side. He'll get a yard and a half. Well, Michael on the year came in with 104 carries, 455 yards. Last week, only six rushes for 24 yards for the sophomore out of Mobile, Alabama. Today, seven carries and 22 yards. Well, for on the season, already with the seven touches in this game, the most carries he's had was versus Missouri with 19 attempts. This is an offense for Florida. They don't maintain possessions. And so because of that, they don't run a ton of offensive snaps. They average about 62 offensive plays a game. And here yet another third down where if they're not aided by an encroachment like they were last time. So on third down and nine, Franks will drop it off underneath the P. Ryan, and he has run out of bounds. It'll be fourth down coming up. Let's get an update. Go to the studios. All right, guys, we're, of course, watching Georgia and Kentucky. Three zip cats. Nick Chubb in from eight yards out. Kentucky responded with a field goal. Close game right now as they start the second. Seven, six, dogs. Thank you, Dari. Well, we've seen some of these teams with letdowns this weekend as they get ready for some rivalry games next week. It's been interesting, hasn't it? Because yeah. you look at Auburn and they kind of let Louisiana Monroe linger around a tight game early with Miami versus Virginia after these big matchups. Fair catch called for by Wilson. He will take it around the 16-yard line, a 30-yard punt. Blazers with the football when we come back to Gainesville right after this. Hey, coming up at 7.30 Eastern time tonight, it's our SEC Saturday night game. Missouri squares off against Vandy right here on the SEC Network. It's also streaming live on the ESPN app. Tigers have really made a move. I mean, we saw them week one, and, and where they were week one to where they are now in week 12 is, is somewhat amazing. You look at Georgia already clinching the SEC East, but you're right, Missouri, the fact that they've been able to rattle off victories in sequence, started with their big win versus Idaho. They built on it with UConn in back-to-back -back conference wins. They lose football. I think Florida has it. They went with Spencer Brown on the carry. The Gators dancing around like they have it, and they do. The big Taven Bryan blows up the point of attack, but it looked like it was Boshan Joseph who was coming on a rundown blitz from his inside linebacker position. Watch him reach in there. I don't know if he got his right hand in there. That ball just came right out. It looked like Spencer Brown, he had it. Now, I don't know that he ever secured that handoff. By the time Joseph got there, it didn't look like, it really never really looked like Spencer Brown rolled over that football. And Jabari Zaniga coming up with the big turnover and a short field for the Florida Gator offense to work with. Mark Thompson. Running hard down to the six yard line. By the way, that is just the second fumble recovery by this Gator defense this year. Coming into this game, they've done relatively well with their takeaways. 
But as you mentioned, Dave, you know, it's been all interceptions. You know, secondary coming up big. We talked about this with the coaches. They mentioned this as well. We need our defense to set our offense up with the short field so we can get these scoring opportunities. The Gators stage a nice drive. They stall out. You get the ball right back, and now you're in the red zone. Really the first fumble recovery by the defense last week. They got one on a special teams as Thompson runs right into the heart of that D line. And he got stuffed after he picked up a yard. Tevin Cruz leading the charge. The team's leading tackler came in with 78. Now has 82 on the year. UAB has got some size on the inside. And they do a pretty good job anchoring down at the point. That time Tico Powell and others not seeding any ground along the line of scrimmage. There's big number 93 slid out to the defensive tackle, defensive end spot from his nose guard where he started the season. And you see them covering up the inside guard to guard. There's not a lot of running room inside. Timeout, UAB. Blazers taking their second timeout here. We're still in the first quarter. Bill Clark, of course, trying to build this program up after the two-year hiatus on the flip side. Randy Shannon gets the interim job from Jim McElrain, and he's just trying to keep these guys focused, in tune with the process. And, you know, let's face it, he had a, he, he, he really put kind of in perspective last week or in our meetings yesterday about he's given up his defensive assignments, trying to really get the offense, keeping an eye on those guys. But I think from a mental standpoint, that's his hardest job. Yeah, to be able to transition and see it globally as opposed to just handling the defense. You know, let Chris Rump, the defensive line coach, who's excellent at that position, handle the defensive play calling duties. But what Coach Shannon mentioned that has helped him so far is he's made it a point. He's a former head coach. He's done this before. He said, I had relationships with the offensive players. I've made it a point to make sure I'm aware of who these kids are on the other side of the ball, even though I'm not coaching them. The players responded. They responded relatively well, not versus Missouri, but certainly versus South Carolina. Third down and three. Thompson, he is stuffed. That's a loss of three. Marshawn Diggs made the play for the Blazers, and now it's fourth down. They're trying to get it outside. Felt as if they could get UAB outflanked. They were unbalanced along the offensive front. And UAB not only did an excellent job of stringing this play out, but Marshawn Diggs flying downfield and making a forced tackle on the edge. Well, that was textbook. And now it sets up a fourth down and six. And the arrow already hit from 39. This one from 26. And he will get the job done. Now 13 out of 14 on the year. Well, that's three points for Florida. That's a huge win by the UAB defense. You've got a short field to defend to keep the Gator offense denied the end zone once again. The Blazer offense obviously putting the defensive unit on a short field. Great job by that run defense stepping up big on the heels of a fumble and forcing that field goal attempt. Don't forget Monday, 7 o'clock Eastern time. It's the latest Thinking Out Loud with Greg McElroy and Marcus Spears. You can participate through social media, live call-ins throughout the show, talking football news of the week from an offensive and defensive standpoint every Monday at 7 o'clock Eastern on the SEC Network. Also catch that, by the way, on the ESPN app. So we'll see if UAB can get some offense cranked up. This is... A team on the year that is just shy of a school record in terms of points per game. They're averaging 32. That's 42nd in the country. Total offensive yards just shy of 400. They have really been able to run the ball with the best of them this year. 27th in the country in yards per game on the ground. Here's Turner. And he'll drive the pile out to the 34-yard line. Let's get an update. Go down to Dawn. 
Guys, I had a chance to talk to sophomore David Reese about Coach Randy Shannon and what he has done to keep this team together during tough times. He told me this group has grown as men, and he feels Shannon has helped to transform him into a better person. A lot of respect from this team for Randy Shannon. Yeah, this is a, a defense that certainly still has some quality players despite some injuries. Well, David Reese kind of curiously yeah. on the sideline for this offensive series. But yeah, it's from a leadership standpoint. They've needed him to step up. He was very outspoken after the defense's effort versus Missouri. Boy, Brown hit his own guy in the backfield. He still managed to get a yard out of that. But second down and nine coming up. Well, disjointed in the offensive backfield right now for UAB. And you know that's sometimes just enough. When you're playing on the road. You recognize the records. There's a lot of good players opposite this Blazer offense. They're going to make sure that they start buttoning up some of these details. You can't afford to be running into your own teammate in the offensive backfield. Empty set. They'll send Donnie Lee in motion, but come near side. Ronald Turner makes the catch. Not to 38, give him three, but now you're looking at third down and about six coming up. Well, this is a team in UAB that they have to stay on schedule. They need to find ways to pick up positive yards on first down and meaningful yards at that. We're talking four yards so that you can set up a second and manageable, maybe a shot play, but a third down that you can still convert. We've already mentioned that this offensive unit's been excellent at maintaining drives and converting third downs, but you can't do that with a near negative yardage play or only two yards on first down. Well, the Gators get a couple of field goals from Eddie Pinheiro in the first quarter, and they lead UAB six to nothing on a glorious day at the Swamp. We're back at the swamp. Six nothing Gators start of the second quarter. UAB looking at a third down coming up. You see the total yards just 12 today for this team that averages almost 400 per game. Gators bringing some pressure. They'll sling it underneath. Pass is caught. That'll go to the tight end Hayden Pittman. He'll pick up eight, and that is good enough for a first down. He's just going to cross right where pressure came, and we. I've seen this rotation at linebacker. So this time, Boshan Joseph, David Reese on the sidelines. They brought pressure that time. Did the Gator defense well handled by UAB? Early doing a good job of finding his tight end across the middle for the conversion. This is something that the Blazer coaches like so much about early checking in and out of the right offensive snap. Only a yard for James Noble. CC Jefferson picks up his third tackle today. Early, by the way, perfect throwing the football for the Blazers. He's four out of four, 21 yards. He's an efficient passer. He's not going to scare this secondary. Few do. The Gators like to spend a lot of time in man coverage. That means that they're able to stop the run with numbers. It gets very crowded in that box. Because they're not helping over the top very often. First Rice early was 20 of 21. A conference USA record for completion percentage. At 197 yards and three touchdowns against Rice. Now it's second down. It'll end around. Andre Wilson will pick up a couple of yards. But another lengthy third down coming up for UAB. It's been challenging because this is something that UAB coming into this game had done such a good job of setting up third and distances to go that are easier to convert. They averaged 6.2 yards to go on third down. That was the ninth shortest distance to convert of any team in all the FBS. Hasn't been the case so far here today. Early. He is dropped. Taven Bryan, the junior out of Casper, Wyoming. A loss of three. The coaches said that Taven Bryan is country strong. The guys from Casper, Wyoming. He's out there tossing guys around like hay bales. That time was just a little bit of confusion. And a guy that is as talented as number 93 
you better be focused and be assigned. And that time that was not the case. And Brian able to get the tackle. Dixon will punt it away. Good tight spiral that will hit inside the 10 and that will bounce into the end zone. So Florida defense stepping up today inside the swamp. They give the football right back to the offense back in a moment. Dorian Oka in studio updating South Carolina Wofford. Wofford hadn't beaten South Carolina in 100 years. As of yesterday, Jake Bentley into the end zone. Tight game, though, just 7-3 midway through the second already, guys. Yeah, Dart, we were just talking about it. Georgia, of course, uh, in a little slugfest with Kentucky, 7-6. In Athens, we saw Mississippi State really struggle with a reeling Arkansas team. Of course, Auburn also a little slow out of the gates today. Well, you got to play that next game, and I think sometimes there's a good bit of carryover from the previous week. Here's Franks on first down. Dropped out of bounds. Nice throw. Dre Massey had his hands on it. French has made a couple of really nice throws, and his guys aren't helping him. That's a great point, Dave. And you know, we talked to Doug Nussmeyer, and he said, look, the Franks kid's got everything you're looking for. you got to catch it. We saw Massey earlier on an end around. They were trying to get him some touches, and you can't lay it in there any better than that. You've got to do a better job helping your quarterback. We've seen Tyree Cleveland. He was laid up with a nice pass. He was incapable of coming up with it. Now Frank's let down once again by the receiver court. Here's P. Ryan. He has twisted around and hit at the 24. Anthony Rush leading the charge. The junior out of Raleigh, North Carolina for the Blazers. Diggs coming up. And they what? This UAB defense, boy, they swarm to the football now. You know, they're not scared to rally. And this is something that you know, UAB said, we really like our team speed on the defensive side of the football. Bill Clark has mentioned he's been pleased with the consistency of his offense. It's the defense and special teams that has improved as the season has worn on. And as you mentioned, Dave, if you can't get downhill quickly versus this defense, they populate to the football and get hats to gain tackle. Third down and six. Frank steps up over the middle, pass is caught. Stevens has the first down near the 45-yard line. Will Dawkins on the tackle, but the Gators pick up 19. So here he is right here. He's just going to run right over the middle, and it's just a three-man rush. So Franks has got plenty of time to allow this to develop. No pressure in that pocket. Nice and deep, can step up. Able to find Stevens for an easier conversion. I haven't seen a lot of the tight ends targeted a lot throughout this season. He ran again off the right side, and he'll take it to the 45-yard line, give him a yard and a half. Diggs with another tackle. Boy, Marshawn already with six stops out of that UAB secondary. Having to come up and make those, but P. Ryan, he's been able to find some run running room behind Martez Ivy. That time, they pulled Ivy from his left guard position where he is playing today predominantly. And that's not a bad guy to tuck in behind to be able to pick up positive yardage. But Pirine, hopefully he hydrated last night because he's going to get his touches in this game. That is apparent. And a timeout taken by Florida. And we will step aside. Gators looking at second and eight. When we come back, they lead at 6-0 over the Blazers. <laughs> 2008, the last SEC championship for this Gator team. They haven't won a game period this year since September 30th against Vanderbilt in their first home game here in a month. Hey, Wednesday at 10 o'clock Eastern, the SEC Network grants you an all-access pass to Ole Miss football for their game against Texas A&M. It's SEC Inside. It's also streaming live on the ESPN app. And Jordan Ta'amu has been the story for the Rebels. Their quarterback, the junior college transfer, who has been given the reins of that offense, has been sensational. That's explosive offense. No matter who's a quarterback, it seems. And one of the most imposing wide receiving quarters you're going to find in college football. So on second down, here's Franks. Pass is caught by Powell, breaks a tackle in the open field. He'll have the first down 
inside the 45 of UAB. Give them 11. Well, this was set up, intended at least, to be a tunnel screen. And Powell, you know, he gets a little bit hung up, wasn't clean making the reception, and he just improvised, redirected back to the left. That play is intended for Powell to come all the way across the formation after he caught the football behind those linemen that released. That's a great singular effort by number four. Now up to 30 receptions on the year. On first down, P. Ryan to the outside. He has nine, maybe ten when it's all said and done. Tevin Cruz drags him down. But that may be good enough for the first down, and they will pick up the chains and move him. Really good job on the backside. Just a zone look, and P. Ryan showing some excellent vision, winding that ball all the way around to the backside. Nice block by DeAndre Goolsby and Stone for Scythe, number 72. That's a big joker right there, 6'7", 330 pounds at right tackle because they have slid Wani Taylor over to left tackle on Martez Ivy inside the guard. Franks, little play action. Going down the middle, looking to the end zone, and that one was almost picked off. Looking for Josh Hammond, Darius Williams on that coverage. Boy, they like to, if they're going to match up one-on-one, -on -one, Williams is the guy to do it. Absolutely. This is a matchup that the Blazers want. If anything else, they're happy to have Williams singled up off a play action shot. And that time, really, Williams had a better shot at making the reception than Josh Hammond, who was underneath it. But you can see the offensive line that's kind of been moved around. Big stone for sight at right tackle. Ivy number 73 inside at left guard. Little delay handoff. P. Ryan. To the 32, give him a couple of yards, and now you're looking at third down and about eight coming up. Coach has mentioned that we're going to see some different faces along that front, and the reason was, at least the reason it was given, was they want to keep guys fresh. I think more than anything else, they're saying, look, the last couple of weeks of this season, let's put some of these guys in positions where we think they're more natural. Martez Ivy is a guy who was a highly regarded recruit, He's been playing at left tackle most of the year. He played okay, didn't play great. He's a really good offensive guard. And we've seen him. He's had a couple of nice pulls already in this game. So on third down, pressure comes. Frank dodges it. Pass is caught. And that should be good enough for the first down. They went to Hammond. Now they're saying incomplete. incomplete. Waving it off. Great job by Franks even staying alive to be able to deliver this pass. And it was Broderick Thomas with the pressure coming up from his safety spot. See Hammond's coming back. I wonder if well, did he possess that football? Long fumble it and fall and on it. Fumble right. and recovered, exactly. So this will be a fourth down coming up and a 50-yard attempt. For Eddie Pinheiro. Kick is on the way. This guy's good. He is solid as they come. The red shirt junior out of Miami, Florida. He has made three field goals today. He is now 26 of his last 27 dating back to last year. SEC Network Football is brought to you by Pilot Flying J, the official travel center fueling the SEC. Well, in August of last year, UAB broke ground on their new football operations center, 46,000 square feet of office space, team meeting and film rooms, weight room, training facilities, $22.5 million. And how about the, the design of their... Isn't that brilliant of that indoor practice? Yeah. It's not really indoors, but it's covered. That's A.D. Mark Ingram did a great job. Not only are they going to start football back, but they're going to start brand new facilities. What a great job in fundraising by the administration on the athletic side. And this was 
You know, Mark Ingram was over there. This was his ideas. Look, I don't, I don't need walls. Save ten I, million dollars. And and what an efficient use of it, right? You know, you're looking at it. You're starting a program over, and to be able to have these types of facilities coming out of, well, we can't afford this. It's a financial drain on the system. Bit of a contrast, you would think. I don't know how you can reconcile those two realities. Great job by UAB, not just at the coaching staff level, but at the administration level, providing this program the resources it needs to compete. Well, let's see if they can compete offensively. They've had a tough time moving the football today against this Gator defense, and they fumble it. The Gators may have it again. Already one fumble by UAB led to a field goal, but they say the Blazers have recovered. Well, we mentioned, you know, it's been a bit bumpy in the Blazer backfield. Now, either it was a bad exchange, O'Shawn Joseph getting in there, resulted in a fumble that was a turnover. And then we saw Brown bump into his own player in, the, in his backfield, and he gets this handoff cleanly. But again, Taven Bryan in there, and it really didn't look like he got his hands on the football to rake it out, but it ended up on the deck again. On second down, here's Kylan Brown, who's a backup quarterback. They moved to tight end. He heaves it down the field, and that one is picked off. Chauncey Gardner. He's to the 20 and run out of bounds. The Blazers tried some razzle-dazzle, and it backfired. That was more than just razzle-dazzle. That was subterfuge. Kylan Ben is a backup quarterback. He's usually number 12. This is a clearly a backwards pass. So he's able to make yet another forward pass. This isn't by a wide receiver. That's by a quarterback in disguise. Not just by his position, but by his number. An ill-advised throw, well defended by Gardner. This is a dangerous secondary to throw into no matter what you do. Doesn't matter who's throwing it, your starter, your backup whether he's wearing a quarterback number or receiver number. The Gators are more than capable of coming up with turnovers in their secondary. Now their 12th interception on the year. And another short field for Franks of this offense. Hammond in motion. He'll settle in and they'll run out of the eye. They're going to work P. Ryan to the left side. He is walloped at the 11-yard line. Another big hit coming from that secondary. That one goes to Broderick Thomas. Broderick Thomas, he is not scared to bring the lumber because otherwise this was unbelievable push by the Florida offensive front. That entire left side of the line behind Martez Ivy and Wani Taylor just collapsing the UAB defensive front backwards and Broderick Thomas came screaming up from his safety position to lay the wood. Franks will throw it. Deontay Lewis, but a flag is down. You see Florida in this game. They've had scoring opportunities one that they drove the football down and now for the second time a defense setting up the offense with a short field. An eligible receiver downfield number 16 on the offense five yard penalty from the previous spot replay second down. Freddie Swain is a receiver. You see Freddie Swain, number 16. He was in the middle of the slot. There he is right there, but he's covered up by 10 on the outside. Because he's covered up by Josh Hammond, he's ineligible to be downfield right there. Potentially, now they're going to review the previous play. Interesting on the review. Here's another look at Swain, who is on the line of scrimmage.
You know, if this reception is made behind the line of scrimmage, the initial line of scrimmage, it doesn't matter where Swain was right. lined up. He doesn't have to be eligible. And it does appear that Siante Lewis made right. that reception behind the line of scrimmage, which would allow 16 Freddie Swain to release downfield. Yeah, I think this I think you're absolutely right on that. I think that was behind the line of scrimmage, and that changes the whole complexion of whether that flag can be thrown or not. If Lewis makes that catch across the line of scrimmage, Swain's covered up. Right. And once you're covered up, you're now ineligible to release downfield. I think they're going to overturn this and make it a touchdown. After further review, the ball was touched behind the line of scrimmage. Therefore, there is no foul for an ineligible receiver downfield. Result of the play, touchdown. So give Siante Lewis an 11 yard touchdown reception. Felipe Franks with his sixth touchdown pass of the season. And the Gators looking for point number 16. It's amazing about that. I mean, you think about this offense and their woes, only the seventh touchdown pass on the year. Only the six by Felipe Franks. And they needed one at that. They needed to capitalize off of the takeaway. Pinero's point after is up and good, and the Gators three field goals and a touchdown. Now lead it 16 to nothing, 5.49 to go before halftime. And you see Siante Lewis, we mentioned the tight end's not getting a ton of looks. He got a good one there for six. Just a few minutes from the Auto Owners Insurance Halftime Report. Dory Doring and Chiswick, uh, Alabama, Auburn tune-ups in the bag. We'll show you how they look. Georgia now starting to look like Georgia. What do you think of uh, Florida so far? Gator defense, man. 33 yards allowed, two turnovers. Played hard last week, playing hard this week with a lot of energy. I like them. All right, see you in a few, guys. Thanks, Dory. And I think uh, both those guys hit it in that. I think a big question was how much would this team come to play? Yeah. And it looks today like they are uh, focused and determined to get out of here with a win. Well, they mentioned the turnovers, four of them last week versus South Carolina, already two here today to set the offense up with scoring chances. Tonight at 10.30 Eastern, our SEC Now team will be back to recap all the day's games. You can see that streaming live on the ESPN app as well. Dari, Gene, and Chris. We'll break down all the football and get us ready for what should be a very eventful final Saturday of the regular season next week. Boy, it looks as though the Iron Bowl will have a little something, a little extra spice in it, huh? It's nice for that, for a change to be a big game, you know? <laughs> Where something's on the line. It's not just about those two fan bases, but other people should pay attention to that game. How many times have we said that? It's a gateway to championships. Is the Iron Bowl. UAB's offense been stuck in the mud on a dry field. That handoff to Brown picks up three. Oh, excuse me, that was Donnie Lee on that carry. We haven't seen a whole lot of Brown, however, who has come into this game with 1,100 yards. We've seen more Donnie Lee. He got some touches on their opening drive. He caught a nice screen pass for a conversion on third down, and Donnie Lee, we might see more of him, obviously, in this game because of Brown's difficulties handling the football ending up on the ground twice already second down boy a little delay handoff to Lee goes nowhere David Reese making the play a loss of a yard the team's leading tackler had another one to his list came in with 83 you see Reese right here and I like the rotation what they're doing is they're getting some young guys in up front but they got their veteran linebackers in with the young defensive line and vice versa. You get on a third down, you substitute your vets back in there, Taven Bryan among them, back in along the front along with Kyrie Clark. Another third down. Pass is caught, but that's going to be a, a little bit shy. The first down, only six yards to Andre Wilson. First time we've called Wilson's name, and he has been the most targeted receiver for UAB. Bill Clark's going to play field position, and I think wisely so. When I mean, you're looking at an offense in the Gators, they've staged really one drive. Otherwise, you've seen short fields that have compromised your ability to stay close to the scoreboard. Right now, kick the football away, try to play defense, and get the ball back with better field position. 
Joel Dixon will punt it away. Sixth in Conference USA with a 42-yard average. That one backs up and gets a favorable Gator roll, but it almost hit a Gator player. 31-yard on that punt. Oh, what Boshan Joseph is thinking right there. Get away from that ball. If he touches that, UAB recovers it. It's UAB ball. I hadn't contacted anybody. I don't know what was going through his head. This Florida offense obviously has had issues all year trying to get the football down the field. What do you make of Felipe Franks, Felipe Franks and, and how he's played today? Well, I think that you know we've already seen him. He's been able to adjust in the pocket. You know, he had a nice little flip pass forward. It's been drops. We've seen a couple of nice plays downfield where Franks has delivered to call it catchable as an understatement. A near perfect pass. Tyree Cleveland can't come up with it. Trey Maxey can't come up with it. His receivers are going to have to compliment him as a passer in this ball game. Gators 113, 113th in total yards, and 115th in scoring. Our Darius Lemons, true freshman with the carry. He'll pick up four. Will Dawkins on that tackle. We'll talk about the injuries. Malik Davis, running back. We mentioned our Darius Lemons in there, but you know, Davis, he kind of started coming onto the scene after the Tennessee game, in the Tennessee game. And we thought this guy might be one of the better young talents at running back. They've been without his services. This will be the third straight week for the Florida offense. Not sure if they'll even get him back for next week either. Davis, the team's leading rusher despite missing that time with 526 yards on the ground. Here goes Lemons breaking a couple towel tackles and flipped at the 50. He'll pick up 11 and move the chains. The Gators shifting around this series again, offensive front. Ivy back at left tackle, but they've been able to get excellent push along their offensive front. And if they can get their running back clean, to be one on one with the safety, a corner out in space. That offensive front has done its job. They've been able to do that, collapsing the edges of the Blazer defensive front. On first down, little stutter step by Lemons. He has popped out of bounds around the 41, nine more yards for the youngster. I like running to that left side, see Randy Shannon. Well, he might have been giving Lemons a little ball security pep talk there towards the end of that run. DeAndre Goolsby again doing a good job on the edge. And you can see the rapport that Randy Shannon has kind of cultivated with his team. You mentioned how he spent time with the offensive side, his offensive players. You know, he's not a foreign, it's not a foreign relationship to him as a former defensive coordinator only a few games ago. Second down and short. Franks trying to hit a home run ball to the end zone. Just out of reach of Tyree Cleveland. He's back on the field after getting banged up in the first quarter. A helmet to the knee. We mentioned the drops earlier, but that time Franks just had a little too much on that ball. Well, Cleveland lays out just out of his reach. Had a step on it, though, and Franks, when we cut loose of it early, just the trajectory of that ball was just a, too, a tad too much. You see today, three of seven, a better mark than what they've typically set this season at 31%. That's almost at the bottom for the conference in conversions. On third down and short, they'll run Lemons, and does his second effort get him there? I don't think it did. So now it's fourth down and about a yard. Tevin Cruz, Anthony Rush plugging that hole. Just got done talking about the great push that that left side has been able to get pretty consistently, not on that down. And we mentioned UAB, they do have that capability of anchoring down. They've got size tackle to tackle. Now the question is, will they try the left side again and trusting that being the strength of this offensive front so far in this game? Three tight ends, LaMichael Pirine in the game. Fourth and short. Left side, Pirine. I don't know if he got it. It's going to be right on the line. Boy, there's some flags, some people frustrated. I think they're probably going to get Frederick Johnson here. 
after the play with an unsportsmanlike conduct. And I think he was going to get that spot. I think that they were going to get that fourth down conversion. It was probably going to be close. But not after this penalty. They're going to spot the nose right on the 40. The result of the play is a first down. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct number 74 on the offense. 15 yard penalty, first down. Well, they get the first down. That's the good news. Bad news is they're going to be backed up a little bit. So Frederick Johnson, C number 74, and he's tangled up with Garrett Marino. And Marino just slings Johnson down onto the ground. Johnson gets up to retaliate and runs Ooh. into the headlines. Ooh. Hey, what that young fellow's lucky he's still on the field. You're right. You're lucky the 74 didn't end up out of there. He's saying he got a handful of face masks. I'm not sure I saw that. Regardless, Johnson wasn't pleased and he's been substituted out of the game. One oh seven to go before halftime. And speaking of halftime, you can watch the live performance of Florida's Pride of the Sunshine Marching Band on SEC Network Plus. Start your streaming now on the ESPN app. They're ready to go down on the field, waiting for their opportunity to entertain the folks here at the Swamp. The ball's put back all the way at the Florida 45-yard line. UAB took that timeout. Last time out of the half for UAB, and we mentioned they they took two timeouts earlier on defense. So they've expended all of those. If you get a stop here, you got a chance to maybe have some time left on that clock. And I'll be surprised. Obviously, Florida was able to pick up that first down. No way for UAB to stop this clock. The Gators have been able to run the football relatively well here the past couple of downs. And as we mentioned, Incidentally, on that left side. 158 yards of offense for Florida, just 32 yards for the Blazers. Franks. That little hot sauce on that one to Brandon Powell. That's two now that we've seen. And one was Franks trying to hit Tyree Cleveland deep downfield. Too much on that pass, and then way too much zip on that throw as well out to the flats. To Brandon Powell. Boy, the Gators have dominated time of possession almost 20 minutes here in the first half. They'll swing it to P. Ryan. He's hit just shy of midfield, and the clock will continue to run. He'll pick up four. Devin Cruz with his 10th tackle of the half. That's part of the reason why he's one of the leading tacklers, certainly the leading tackler for the Blazer defense, a sideline to sideline player. Third down. Little pump fake by Franks. He'll get out of bounds. And he'll have the first down. Pickup of six. Box stops at 36 seconds. Florida with that one timeout left. Right, so it keeps the middle of the field open for Florida. They don't have to work the boundaries. With that timeout in their back pocket and Frank showing why he can be such a nice weapon. Things break down, pick up that first down, and then showing that awareness to get out of bounds to stop the clock. Frank's tight spiral, collision on the sidelines. They're going to say uncatchable football. Freddie Swain was the intended receiver. Just got tangled up there with Bronte Harris. It's a good call. I mean, this ball's well out of bounds and overthrown. Once again, we see with Franks, and he's just amped up, I suppose, because three times now in this possession, as you see Harris and Swain over there getting a little bit tangled up along the sideline, but that ball landing well out of bounds. 
So 30 seconds left here in the first half. Frank steps up in the pocket, throws a seed to Powell, who gets out of bounds around the 32-yard line. That's a 14-yard gain, and the clock has 22 seconds left. That's the second time in this game where UAB has only brought three, and Felipe Franks has found a way to make them pay, working that pocket and waiting for someone to break open. That time, Powell, who was lined up to the field side and in the slot where he is again right here, he come all the way across the formation and was nearly on the opposite side on the numbers before Franks hit him with the pass. Franks going over the middle. One hops it. Looking for Brandon Powell. And had it. Had an opportunity there. Powell coming open right over the middle of the secondary. That time the ball low. We've seen Franks, you know, as we mentioned, when he's had a couple of times where he's had to push into the pocket, he's done a good job when he's had to move. But we've seen moments now where when he's able to set his feet, he's got time to deliver the football. That's a throw that he needs to be able to make. He got on the receivers earlier with a couple of drops. That time he got to deliver a catchable ball. That one never had a chance. Nine of 20, 93 yards for Franks. Pressure Cubs. He's hit as he throws. Pass is caught. That goes to Powell. I'm getting the feeling here that Franks enjoys throwing to Mr. Powell. Well, I don't know why you wouldn't. <laughs> Uh, but this time, you know, UAB decides instead of let's just play back coverage, they brought pressure. And Tevin Cruz able to beat the block of Nick Buchanan at right guard and drops the hammer on Felipe Franks as he delivers that pass. You see the numbers there, only three of seven on this drive, with three of those being poorly thrown balls. 13th play of this drive. Franks pressured. He'll be dropped, and he's twisted awkwardly. They're going to say the ball is down, but Franks, boy, we could see it from here. Just his legs got buckled up underneath him on the takedown. Chris Woolbright will get credit for that sack. The only scholarship quarterback in uniform is wearing number 13. We've already seen Kadarius Toney. He had that one snap out of the Wildcat. And so not only were we talking about the sack, but you know, a guy that might have to step in is Dre Massey at quarterback. As you see here, you mentioned it awkwardly landing on the back of Frank's right leg. His right ankle, I don't know how it is. It, how Frank's got up and walked with any weight on that leg is borderline miraculous. You got to get rid of that football situationally. Here in that situation, get rid of it so you avoid the negative yardage play. And here's Dre Massey. Well, that's a guy that's there's a real chance he's the next guy we see at quarterback. Well, Florida going to attempt another field goal of 50 yards already. Eddie Pinheiro is hit from 39, 26, and 50. His career long is 54. Happened a year ago. This guy has been money today and all throughout his career. Let's see what he does here. He does it again. And he got all of that one. He knows it too. You know what's great about Pinheiro? As soon as he hits those kicks, he knows if it's going through. That's two in a row. He's celebrating with another 20 yards of travel for these kicks before they make it through the uprights. That'll do it for the first half. The Gators with four field goals and a touchdown. They have blanked UAB. They've held the Blazers to under 40 yards of offense. So Florida leads UAB 19 to nothing here at the Swamp. It's halftime. That means we need to get it to Dari in the studio. It's all yours. In the second half, only one scholarship quarterback per se in Franks available for the Gators in this game. Let's go downstairs, check in with Dawn. 
Well, David Stinch, just 32 total yards, two first downs that half. Obviously, head coach Bill Clark not happy with what his team has been able to do offensively. He said they spent the entire half talking about it. Don't be surprised if they come up early here in this second half and open it up a little bit. He said they just can't get this run game going, so they've got to do something to help that. But he also said his message to his team, hey, we've been here before. We've been down before. They're playing for pride. So are we. James Noble in at running back, so still Spencer Brown, the thousand yard rusher. Not a lot of action today. Having trouble holding on to the football. That first pass of the half almost intercepted. Marco Wilson was right there. Take a look at our stats in the first half, and you see five rush yards on 11 carries. Time of possession owned by the Gators, and those two big turnovers. That's that led to a couple points. Right. I mean, to me, yeah. that's the story of the first half. Those were the scoring opportunities for the Florida Gators set up by short fields. And frankly, the UAB, de UAB defense did a pretty good job keeping the Gators out of the end zone. There is Spencer Brown on the carry, holds on to the football, picks up two. We talk about opening it up offensively and you know, maybe throwing the football around. That's not A.J. Erdley's strength. Now, we haven't seen attempts or rush attempts from early on a QB design run or a pull when he could give or keep that quarterback but you have to do something offensively that first half it was very conservative almost tentative offensively for UAB early pressure shovel pass Florida plays it so well Reese came up to make a play heck of a play on the little shovel pass it goes to Donnie Lee a loss of two Talk about one of the best playmakers for Florida. And you know, Jabari Zaniga was another guy who was involved in that play. And, you know, for Reese to be able to come around, show that awareness, to see that ball flipping out of there, great job and great awareness by the leader of the defense. Another punt that takes a favorable. Florida bounce that one will go out of bounds. They'll spot it at the 42 yard line 33 yard punt and the Gator offense back on the field for the first time here in the third quarter and let's see how Felipe Franks moves around that pocket if they ask him to do so. His mobility you would think would be compromised. It didn't look like he had too much of a hitch in his gait as he was coming out on the field but you can see that right knee is heavily wrapped. And he does kind of lope his way out onto the football field. We saw on a couple of different occasions there in the first half where Franks was having to buy time in the pocket, slide up in the pocket to be able to find and allow things to develop downfield. Boy, a lot of movement and a lot of flags. False start, 73 on the offense. Five yard penalty, first down. We saw that in the first half when we thought maybe Martez Ivy drew the UAB defensive front off offsides. Wasn't the case that time, but this penalty here where he's got a little bit of a head start as he tilted in his stance. And as we've already mentioned, that offensive line's kind of fluid, moving some guys in and out, including Ivy. B. Ryan hit. Got back to the line of scrimmage. Let's get to the studio, get an update, Dari. Dave, all the momentum was Georgia's way against Kentucky to end the first half, but opening drive of the second half, Kentucky goes 75 yards on eight plays. Benny Snell touchdown. It's an eight-point game now. Kentucky, just a scrappy bunch, not going away. We're well, going to lay down. You know, we've seen Kentucky a couple times this year, and they've won tight games. They're not scared to battle back. Benny Snell is one of those guys. We can start feeding him in the second half. He can take over ball games. Franks backpedals, comes this way to Howell. That one gets a couple of yards. Garrison Mitchell on the tackle. Brandon Powell now with six catches today. He's the go to guy and you knew that he would be and he shows up in the clutch moments like third down not necessarily third and ten plus. You know right here if you're Florida maybe you try to gain some yards and kick this football away as opposed to try to convert. We saw Felipe Franks at the end of the second quarter was often off the mark. In that final drive, his accuracy has been affected. I don't know if it's due to that injury since that was the final play, but not necessarily on target with his throws. 
Franks, good clean pocket. That one is incomplete. No flags. Boy, Hammond thought he was well, definitely hit before the ball got there. Uh, I mean, to say that they're letting him play today is, I think, an understatement. Bronte Harris in coverage, and he's there well early. I mean, he's got hands oh, on Josh Hammond, and the official's right there. No flag. I will say it's been consistent. I mean, we've seen some of these passes, contested throws, if you want to call them that, where you know, under, on a different day, perhaps a flag comes out. And that time you don't get the call. One of the best punters in America, Johnny Townsend, who was averaging 48 and a half yards a punt. Hits that one 47 yards. Time out on the field. Back in a moment. It has been a roller coaster for Florida coaches going back to 1990. Certainly an upswing with Steve Spurrier, 122 victories. Of course, uh, national championship SEC titles that Ron Zook took over. Went 23 and 14. That didn't work out very well. Then Urban Meyer rolls in here, and he knows what to do. Went a couple of championships, SEC titles. He departs, turns it over to Will Muschamp. Will, as well as he was liked here, just couldn't get it done, 28 and 21. And then Jim McElwain, just a few weeks ago, relieved of his duties as head coach after two and a half seasons, 22 and 12, his record. And now Randy Shannon running the show. That one is dropped. Well, there's a look at the coaches and the wins that they averaged per season that they were here. And of course, Coach Spurrier and Coach Meyer. They were, uh, when they were at the peak, they were awesome teams to watch play, and few could touch them on the field. And, you know, I think a few people recognize, and I'm sure a lot of the Florida fans would know that before Coach Spurrier got here, this was a, a football program that experienced no championships, not none that at least stuck and stayed. He got here and put this football program not only on the map, but on the launching pad. It has, it was on an upper trajectory. Obviously, Coach Zook you know, probably flattened that out a tad, and Urban Meyer just built on the shoulders of what Steve Spurrier started here at Florida. Boy, a high snap. Donnie Lee gets the handoff there. And, you know, the big question is where does Florida go from here? We had a chance to visit with Scott Strickland, the athletic director, before the game today. And, you know, one of the things that he wanted to talk about is. You know, I'm asking all the questions fans ask, and he's like, man, what you see out there, all these rumors and innuendos about coaches, they are just that. They are rumors. They are not fact. Nobody knows. I'm in charge of this. He's got some confidants that he works with, but he's not going through some kind of search committee or a search firm. Um, so unless he's putting out the information, I wouldn't listen to it. No, oh, great. Yeah, and, you know, it seemed pretty obvious that no decision had been made. And in the meantime, We've got this man, Randy Shannon, who is trying to do his best to salvage what is left of this season. A lot of that has been managing the emotions that exist within that locker room. Obviously, a disappointing year and a ton of tumult. Well, that goes nowhere. A loss of a yard. And some of the guys that uh, names have been floated around. And, of course, when we were talking to uh, Scott Strickland, he had uh, no response to anything regarding individuals, but uh, certainly down the road, Scott Frost at Central Florida is a hot, hot name. And he is only, what, 45 minutes, hour away from right here. And what he has done at UCF is amazing. Of course, Dan Mullen was a coach here at Florida, an assistant under Urban Meyer for so many years and done a great job in Starkville. Ooh, big hip. Andre Wilson gets away before he is dragged down around the 38 yard line. But regardless of this, I think one of the things that's in play here certainly are the fact that Scott Strickland is is. Taking his time because he doesn't want to invade other schools while their seasons are going on. Their coaches are still actively right. involved with their teams and as a courtesy in this business, um, you know, I think he has laid off maybe some guys that he would want to talk to down the road. Couple of injured Gators. We'll step aside back to the swamp right after this.
All right, okay, in studio, guys, Kentucky, Georgia, Cats came out in the third quarter, drove down the field and scored, made it a one-possession game, but Georgia responded right back, 60-yard drive, Sony Michelle second touchdown, 28-13 in the third. Thank you, Dari. C.C. Jefferson standing on the sidelines. Taylor ran into the locker room for Florida while we were away. It's third down and 11. Erdley. Boy, the pocket collapses. Nowhere to go. He's dropped back inside the 20 yard line. Clayton, the first one there. Loss of 17 yards. Pocket collapse. That's the perfect description. What little there was of it. The ball snapped, and then the pocket evaporated. Jabari Zaniga, Brian from the inside, Clayton on the outside, and eventually. Early really had nowhere to go. You want to get rid of that football, but he was running for his life in full retreat and ended up eating it. Flag is down. Booming kick from Dixon. And good punt coverage by the Blazers, a 49 yard punt. Well, missing some of that, that UAB possession, they were starting to move the football a little bit. Got a couple of conversions. You get a negative yardage play and then a huge sack and it flips field position. Not only does it end the drive, of course, but you give the ball back to your opponent with somewhat decent field position. If they possessed it where they had it originally, it's another 10, 15 yards that you would have captured in the field position. Game. So I think we're waiting on Randy Shannon to determine what he wants to do. Illegal formation on the kicking team. That five yard penalty will be enforced from the end of the kick. First down. Hey, coming up at 730 Eastern, it's our SEC Saturday night game. Missouri squares off against Vandy right here on the SEC network. It's also streaming live on that ESPN app. Mizzou, what a turnaround. They started the year one and five, had a five game skid. They've now won four in a row, one more victory, and they're bowl eligible for the first time in three years. Ralph Webb needs 40 yards to move past Anthony Dixon, former Mississippi State Bulldog, for ninth place on the SEC's all time rushing list. A couple things to keep an eye on tonight. You mentioned Missouri earlier. You know, for them to rattle off four straight wins kind of muscle their way back into this season because it was ugly early on in the year. Barry Odom doing a phenomenal job keeping that team together. Well, that ball should have been picked off. You they were looking it. for Freddie Swain and Darius Williams was right there. I think they were surprised that there was no blue jersey in the area. <laughs> I think Darius <laughs> Williams, he had such a clean look at this. Did you see him coming off of the route of Tyree Cleveland? He ends up knocking that ball down. Definitely on different pages, though, between the quarterback and the receiver. Mark Thompson in the game at running back. They will hand it to 2-4. Big hole on the right side. Thompson bursts to the 50-yard line. 17-yard pickup. He's running hard tonight, even though LaMichael Pirine has got the majority of the carries. You know, I like this lineup. Watch for Scythe right here, Johnson. They're going to get a nice little push right here at the point of attack. Double team up to the second level. Good job on the outside with the unbalanced look to the tight end side. Therefore, you got like kind of an extra gap to defense. You get two double teams right there on the line of scrimmage. Great movement. And Thompson's a guy, man, is he pretty on the hook. He gets out there, 6'2", 220 pounds. If he gets downhill, he's rolling just like this. Big hit, stays on his feet, falls to the 33 yard line. A gain of 16. And an injured Blazer back around the 42 yard line. Basically the same play to the other side. And Thompson, if he can get downhill, square those shoulders up, he's got speed and size. That's a punishing runner. That was Broderick Thomas who laid the hit on Thompson and he's the one that was slow to get up and now he walks off the field. And Thompson a little bit shaken up it looked like he left the game immediately he's being evaluated. 
You see him working on that right shoulder of his, maybe a stinger. You see him working up underneath that shoulder pad. Sometimes when they do that, it's a shoulder separation. I didn't see him go down on the point of his shoulder, but there was definitely a big collision at the end of that run. Two nice runs by Thompson. So P. Ryan back in the game at running back. They'll hand to him, and he'll get it to the 31 and a half yard line, a yard on that play. Well, already some, you know, I mean, this, it just seems like after every second, third play, there's another Gator that gets up hobbling off the field. Uh, <laughs> we've, I mean, it's borderline been belabored in this game. Just how many people are missing. Now this is DeAndre Goolsby. He's got his helmet off on the sideline. He's thrown a couple of nice blocks on the edge of some of these perimeter runs. Franks gets that pass off to Dre Massey. First down inside the 20. They will spot him out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Darius Williams runs him out of bounds, but 17 more yards for the Gators. I like this play design. It's simple, really. You run a play action, it looks like everything's going to go this way, and you'll see Massey leak out as the defense honors what has been a steady diet of runs. He gets lost kind of in the traffic. You bring him across that formation. It's easy for him to kind of get lost amongst all of that. You're trying to flow to the run. It's an easy pitch and catch for big yardage. P. Ryan hit and stopped after a gain of two. Roderick Thomas back on the field now with 11 tackles. He and Tevin Cruz have been racking them up. Cruz with 11 today as well. Their middle backer. You see Thomas and as you mentioned the guy's been so active 10 tackles prior to that play now 11. That guy's been so active in this game. I mean he's got some wear and tear. It seems like you know, every time you get a big run it's kind of tit for tat. He comes downhill. He's going to try to make up for that front seven if there's any deficiencies. Franks will throw clean pocket to the end zone passes dropped. Looking for Josh Hammond that might have been a little late getting there. You hit it. Timing was off on that one. Balls underthrown. Ends up pulling Hammond back into coverage because Hammond had a step on Williams that time. And if you lead this football out towards the edge, towards the sideline there, because there's room to run still, that's a touchdown pass. That is the third pass broken up today by Williams. That gives him seven. A 13 on the year and 17 passes defended on the season. That is Thompson Conference USA. Right here, here's Powell lined up in the slot. Franks looking across the field and back over the middle. Hits Goolsby. Touchdown, Florida from 13 yards out. First touchdown of the year for DeAndre Goolsby, the senior at a Derby, Kansas. You know, they do so much with number 30. You know, he's a guy that he'll be a lead blocker. He'll seal the edge. Then get a ton of looks in the passing game. At that time, comes up with a big third down catch and able to get into the end zone. Second touchdown, seventh touchdown pass of the season, second in the game. Nice concentration by number 30 in traffic. And that's definitely six. Goolsby now with 13 catches on the year, but his first touchdown as that scoring drive takes up three minutes and 14 seconds. And Yarrow's point after is up and good. He goes 66 yards, and Florida has opened this up to a 26 point advantage. Felipe Franks gets the touchdown pass. He's excited. Gator fans excited. Been a while since they won a ball game. They're in control here at the Swamp. Twenty six nothing our tally here at Steve Spurrier Florida Field. 
UAB comes in with seven wins on the year, but they have run into this Gator team that came out with a little urgency today. And you see what they have done defensively. They have put it together. UAB minus seven yards rushing. Of course, a big 17-yard sack a little while ago against UAB certainly hurt their efforts. But 250 to 40 in total yards. Yeah, rushing effort defensively for Florida, shutting down the Blazer rushing attack. That's pretty impressive. That's one of the better running units in College Conference USA. Hey, the ESPN app is a fan's best friend. Stream every ESPN and ABC college football game live at at home or just put out where you're going to be because it works everywhere. Trust, trust us when we say that. Stinch and I have been all over the country using the app this year. <laughs> Download the app to start streaming now. That's almost true. I mean, it's not just the southeast. Missouri's somewhat Midwestern. Used it there. Pretty sure it's functioning elsewhere in the country. I think country. we were using it when we were in Boise last year. That, no, right? that's a great point. We did use it out there. Logo underneath. Pass is caught. That'll go to Logan Scott. Picks up 15. That'll move the chains. You can see UAB now, and obviously trying to tempo. They're jumping the football, but also first down passing here in the second half, looking to open things up offensively. Going a little tempo here, but Erdley will loft it up. Well done. Pass is caught. Jonathan Hayden, whose brother Joe played here at Florida, makes the catch. That's 20 yards. Great awareness by Erdley. He's directing traffic. Watch as he escapes the pocket. Direct Hayden saying, look, I'm coming to you. If you're shallow, you got to go deep. That's the scramble drill. Give your quarterback somewhere to go with the football along the sideline. Nowhere to run for Donnie Lee. He lost a yard. It's going to be so difficult. You know, it does look like, you know, this Florida Gator defense, they're tuned in. These guys are keyed in to stopping this Blazer offense on the ground. You aren't going to get a whole lot of yardage off of handoffs in this contest tonight. We've seen a couple of nice plays, especially in that scramble drill, the previous position as well, where the Blazers have been able to tic tac in the passing game. Early over the middle. That pass is caught. Wilson spins for the first down, but loss of football. Florida has it. Third time today UAB has put it on the grass. And the second lost fumble that we've seen in this game. And the Gator defense has been on a tear when it comes to takeaways. Another big explosive play. And the defense is able to come up with the takeaway, get it back for their offense. Deny your opponent a scoring opportunity and get your team the football back. Every time UAB starts to show some signs of life offensively, the defense comes up with a big stop, either with a deep sack to flip field position or a turnover to stop a drive. First down and 10 Gators at the 22 yard line. Mark Thompson in it running back. Thompson was the one that sparked that last drive with some nice physical runs. Flag down, Thompson out of bounds. Offside on the defense, number 42. Penalty is five yards from the previous spot. Replay, first down. Shaq Jones will line up at the end of the line of scrimmage sometimes. Outside linebacker type. One of those tent pole type players. The guys that stuck around. Stayed a part of this program. That time, too tight to the line of scrimmage. It was in the neutral zone. We've seen that a couple of times from UAB in this game. And right now, Florida offensively not needing any help. There goes Thompson, breaks a couple of tackles, and he'll get out of bounds. This guy has been a beast with the football today. Thompson, once he hits that hole, and he's been hitting it with some immediacy right downfield. 
out of the pistol. And that's a physical run. There's contact in the hole. And he gets that big body rocking and rolling. Six carries, 54 yards. Not a bad stat line. They'll stay with Thompson. He's to midfield. Give him five more yards, though, tripped up by Broderick Thomas. We saw that Broderick Thomas. That was reminiscent of the previous possession. He's one on one with Thompson with a full head of steam. Last time Thomas and Thompson left the game. That's the 12th tackle by Broderick Thomas. But that time he went low. That was an ankle tackle. There's too much body above those ankles to try to tangle with for the safety of UAB versus Mark Thompson with a head of steam. Thomas now with. 12 tackles today up to 80 on the year. That's Mark Thompson on the carry picks up three. Let's go down to Dawn. Well, Dave Stinch actually talked to Mark Thompson this week. The redshirt senior watched Reggie Bush growing up, wanted to be just like him. He told me, though, he had to pick a new guy to emulate because he started to outgrow that body frame. Of course, he's 6'2", 230. He told me he moved on to the Adrian Peterson, more physical style of run game. But, guys, he was adamant he can still shake and bake. <laughs> of course he can. He's having a heck of a game today. More like shake and quake. Because when that guy finishes, it's a kind of a thunderous end. I don't see a whole lot of shaking out of 24. He's a one cut hey. runner. Stick hey, 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 hey. In his mind, he's shaking. <laughs> that dude's Eddie George. He ain't Reggie Bush. Here's P. Ryan. He's to the 32 of UAB. Another first down for the Gators. They pick up 17 on a third and two. Darius Williams with the tackle. I love this play on short yardage. You have a fake on the dive to your fullback and just kind of flip it to your tailback. Fake 63, halfback flip right. And those defenses, they want to collapse in on the interior portion of your offensive front. They want to play the dive and you catch them out there on the perimeter. They'll come near side with it, Hammond. Bounces around to the 20. That'll be good enough for another first down. Give him 11. Roderick Thomas with yet another tackle. Nice rhythm right now for the Gators offensively. And now it's all working. Dre Massey had a nice block out there on the perimeter to spring, spring Hammond. And that's all. Those are easy yardage. We see offenses more and more taking advantage of that. And when you get the running game going, especially in the secondary, you're just going to start back off because that safety help is going to be more committed to the run game. That's when it opens up opportunities UAB. in that horizontal pass. They're first. UAB wants a timeout. We'll step aside as well. Gators on the move. Dari Noka in studio. Just a reminder what's coming up still tonight around the SEC on ESPN. A little over a half hour from now, Brady Hoke taking his first game. As head coach against Tennessee onto the field, or of Tennessee onto the field against LSU. That's on ESPN. Meanwhile, over on ESPN2, might see a lot of points here when these offensive teams get together. Texas AM and Ole Miss. By the way, Vandy, Missouri kickoff on this network, now 8 Eastern. Push back half hour because of weather, guys. Thanks, Dar, for the update. The weather here is absolutely perfect. It's glorious so far tonight. Perfect conditions to play football. Or play golf or, or whatever outdoors. Tailgate. <laughs> Cut the grass. P. Ryan picks up four. Uh, you going Tommy Boy with the refrigerator yeah. right there? Anything you want to keep cold? <laughs> right. Okay. Anything you want to do outdoors? <laughs> Great weather for that. Got it. Clock down to 20 seconds to go here in the third quarter. And again, another quarter. Even though there were a couple of big plays from UAB, it's just another quarter that Florida has. Maintain the football. They have sustained some lengthy drives today. Their total yards today, 308 to 93. P. Ryan cuts it to the outside. A foot race to the end zone. Touchdown, Florida, 15 yards. We've seen a couple of passing touchdowns 
with Felipe Franks at the helm. But the best way to complement an offense, especially one that doesn't throw the ball very well, is to do this on the ground. And even on the previous drive, we've seen the best drives for this Florida offense in this game. They have been powered by their rushing attack. Well, Michael P. Ryan, Mark Thompson, both rocking and rolling in the rushing game for the Gators. Pinheiro been very busy today. Caps off that drive that went 78 yards, seven plays, 414, and that wraps up third quarter football. Well, Michael P. Ryan finding the end zone, and the Gators on cruise control, 33-0. Been entertaining here between quarters. A little Tom Petty sing along here at the Swamp in Gainesville. Game summary looks like this dominated by Florida. Well, all game long, you thought it was going to be difficult for the Blazers to get things going on the ground. It's proven to be the case. Minus eight rushing yards. You see the two passing touchdowns by Felipe Franks and that rushing attack getting going here in the second half for the Gator offense. 33 nothing UAB with the football time for an update Dari. All right guys take a look at Georgia and Kentucky it is uh, getting ugly if you're Kentucky Nick Chubb breaks this one puts him over a thousand yards for the season fifth SEC player with three thousand yard rushing seasons Sony Michelle just found his way to the end zone as well guys. Well it was a matter of time for Georgia I think got it rolling and up next, Georgia Tech, a team that they lost to last year, lost two of three to the Jackets over the last few years. So far, Georgia's been able to kind of vanquish all of those defeats from a season ago. Lost to Florida, lost to Vanderbilt, lost to Tech. They want to take care of all of those so far. Deep throw down the middle, pass it, caught. Ubosi, touchdown, 74 yards. On the heels of that Tom Petty song, that quieted this crowd. We got a defense to take the field. First shot. As soon as you get a chance, you see Ubosi over there fired up, trying to kind of ignite that sideline. And this offense has been stymied the entire game by the Gator defense. And they were able to hit a big one to get into the end zone. Hurdley known more as a running quarterback, but certainly looked good on that throw through a strike for a 74 yard touchdown pass. Bosey was among the three receivers. So here he is right here. He's going to run right down the hash. He'll throw a little bit of a move there, just enough to slow Marco Wilson down, kind of still his feet, and then break right past him. Sneaks back. Behind the secondary, we talked about some of the first down throwing that we've seen from UAB here in the second half. It's helped, but we haven't seen any shots downfield really other than that trick play where they had Colin Blinn, their backup quarterback, in a receiver's number, number 83. It was ill-fated, ended up being an interception going the other way by Chauncey Gardner, but this time, early able to find Ubosi for a big touchdown and finally the Blazers on the board. The previous 31 plays accounted for 93 yards. That last one went 74. Lemons will let that one bounce. Out to the 25 yard line we go. Don't forget Monday 7 o'clock Eastern. It's the latest thinking out loud with Greg McElroy and Marcus Spears. Of course, they'll be talking football news of the week from an offensive defensive standpoint. Of course, getting you set for the weekend ahead rivalry matchups all over the place. And of course, the Iron Bowl was so much at stake. A lot to talk about on Thinking Out Loud 7 o'clock Monday right here on the SEC Network. See Jonathan Hayden over there. He had a nice play on the scramble drill earlier. 
You know, UAB's been able to move the ball at times. It hasn't been consistent. And frankly, you know, a couple of drives here in the second half, a turnover stops it, a sack stops it. The bulk of the offensive production, as you just mentioned, Dave, on that big play for a score here in the fourth. Lemons, he breaks a tackle out to the 33-yard line, gain of seven. You know, this is the first time UAB's had some national television exposure. They have been uh, on the Internet quite a bit this year. And this game shouldn't take away from what they have accomplished this season. And Bill Clark, who just got a contract extension signed through 2023, pays him just under a million dollars in his first year of the New Deal. Third highest paid coach in Conference USA. And you know everybody at UAB wants him to stay around, but his name's being bantered for a lot of jobs for what he's done. But it seems to me like he is proud of what he has done. It's going to be really hard for him to leave. I think you're right. And, you know, part of the concern might be is that because so many players. Lemons tripped up at the 45. So many players for UAB were Juco transfers. That means your roster is going to turn over. And it's going to turn over in a big way just because of eligibility being exhausted. As we see once again, Nice run. Good patience, really. DeAndre Goolsby does a good job setting the block right there on the edge once again. Lemons showing some shake there on the edge. The whistle will stop that play before it gets going. A false start. Prior to the Florida. snap, false start. 73 on the offense. Five yard penalty. First down. Uh, Martez Ivy again. You know, as we mentioned, he's been kind of sliding in and out. I don't know if he's just trying to get a head start or what. Having difficulty being one player removed after being right next to the center, although he had a false start when he was at guard as well. He's been early a lot, at least three different times here tonight. So first and 15. Lemons stretching it hits the seam first down at the 32. 20 yards on that carry. A great block by Moral Stevens on the edge. And you look out wide, Brandon Powell did a good job tying up his defender. That's when you see these explosive plays, especially the ones on the perimeter. You want to get loose, you better have good perimeter blocking from your receiver position. Brandon Powell, we've mentioned his name so many times here during this game. Excellent on third down, a good receiver, and even proving to be a nice blocker to be able to spring lemons again. Lemons in some traffic. That is the 67th play run by Florida. UAB has run 32. It's been a dominating performance. There's really no other way to describe it. And whenever UAB has moved the ball, the Gator defense finds a way to get a takeaway quickly, and the offense capitalized. During the second half, they put together a couple of nice drives. We mentioned in the first half, it was really field position to put Gators into their scoring opportunities. And a couple of times where they had to come away with field goals. Not so here in the second half. We've seen some nice runs. Mostly, that's been the difference here in these two sets of quarters. R.J. Raymond can't hang on to it. They tried to slide him out of the backfield, and he had some room over there. So now it'll be third down and seven. You see R.J. Raymond, he can't believe it. He had a chance out there. The pass kind of turned him completely around. He couldn't quite rein it in. You can see not only the sidelines disappointed for him, but a collective groan from the crowd here. And I think it was more than just the drop. You recognize the guys that don't always get a ton of targets. <laughs> Raymond still can't believe he didn't come up with that catch. P. Ryan. He's to the 25. Remember, Florida came into this with just over 50 available scholarship players. That is crazy. And it's hard to imagine, really, when you think about it. So difficult, as you see you know, P. Ryan with another carry. We talk about how much, and there's an injured Blazer defender. Looks like it's Tevin Cruz. 
We've called his name a number of times. He's a big part of the Blazer defense. 12 tackles tonight for Tevin. They're working on him. We'll take a, a break and be back in a moment. Right there, 15 has been busy. He is four out of four. He's hit 250 yarders. This will be from 42. Well, keep an eye on him as he kicks it. He's like the Larry Bird of kickers. He just he starts celebrating with the ball still in the air. Oh, he pointed. He oh. knew it was dead center. He's like a three-point shooter, just kind of leaving it up there for a little while. Give this guy protection. He's just going to knock it through. What a weapon. <laughs> he's fired up. Look at him. Hey, as far as kickers go, he's quite entertaining. Yeah, yeah I got it. Right down the middle. What's that? We cross midfield? You thinking field goal? Just do it. Yep, we'll just kick one real quick. 39, 26, 50, 50, 42 to make it 36 to 7. First Florida kicker to make two 50 yard field goals in the same game. And on the year now he is 16 of 17 and going back to last year. He is 28 <laughs> of 29. Well, look at the, I wonder are these are these these are Tebow jerseys. These no, are Pinheiro jerseys. That's right. He's a rock star a rock star here in Gainesville. We need to get the reverse side and see just whose jersey. Oh, they're, no, we don't. No, we don't. That's Pinheiro's jersey. No, we don't. They're clearly <laughs> they're representing good. Eddie. Uh, oh, they're fired up. Almost as fired up as Eddie is. Wilson will take this kick and get it out to the 20-yard line. Well, here at Steve Spurrier, Florida Field, head ball coach, happy with his performance. You know he's been. Struggling a little bit, probably with this five game losing streak. Only the second time since that team in uh, 79 went 0 10 and 1 that they've lost five consecutive. Make him happy. You want to keep, you want to keep the head ball coach happy. Make sure that, uh, make sure he's pleased with what's going on on the field <laughs> so forth. A little concerned with that, uh, that mascot they got over there at UAB. The, uh, the dragon for that blazer looks like a gator. Took the uh, one chip challenge or something with those flames coming out of his mouth. Which looks a lot like a gator on their jerseys. Boy, a big collision. Sean Davis is down for Florida. Logan Scott was the one that was hammered. Davis, the True freshman out of Miami, Florida. Getting some work at safety. It is a collision sport, and this defines it for sure. Back in a moment. Sean Davis, the true freshman out of Miami, jogs off the field because he was slowed by this big collision. With Logan Scott lay there on the ground for a few moments in pain, but as you can see, moving that, uh, moving those arms yeah. pretty well. So hopefully it's nothing serious. Don't look real serious. You we'll probably see more of him in this game. 10:48 to go. UAB second down and 10. They're going to go deep again. Incomplete. Looking for Justin Walker on that far side early throwing the football today 13 of 17 178 yard, 175 yards at a touchdown and included in that was a 74 yard strike for their only points on the board.
High throw caught though by Hayden Pittman. Gets a couple of yards. And now it's fourth down. Out comes the punting unit. 10-22 uh, to play, and there it is. I mean, you're thinking, can we afford to try to extend drives? And the school board's getting away from me. It's been away from me for some time. You give your defense some field to defend if you can. Fair catch called for by Freddie Swain. 41-yard punt. Gators with the football and in control of this one. Back in a moment. Thirty-six to seven, Florida out in front. Gators trying to snap a five-game losing skid. UAB has won three in a row and five of their last six as they try to set a program record for wins in a season. Thompson on that carry. Well, some headlines from around the SEC this week, of course. Uh, you have to be living in a closet somewhere if you don't know that Butch Jones is no longer the head coach for the Tennessee Volunteers. Interesting on what will happen in Knoxville in the next week or so. Missouri, one win away from bowl eligibility. They will take on Vanderbilt later on tonight. By the way, that game delayed a half hour. It will start at 8 o'clock Eastern. There is a, a tornado warning in the area in Alabama. Shuts out Mercer, 73rd straight win against an unranked opponent. Even if you're in a closet, you could probably know that news with the ESPN app, right? That's good point. Keep you abreast of all that news. That's so true. That's so true. Hard to not know. The app, you just can't get away from it. No, you the can't. App. Nope. You're a cell phone away from being connected to everything going on. What do you make of Felipe Franks today and his performance? And I know it's been a struggle for him. Yeah, you know. The season, not necessarily today, but the season. Yeah, the, the whole season. You know, it's been difficult, I think, for Franks because you talked to Doug Nussmeyer and he said, look, the guy's got the skill set. He's got the tools. The game needs to slow down for him. He needs to figure out how to make one snap and then clear. You learn from it, then you burn it. That play can't persist into the next play, and that hasn't been the case for him. So not only does the game have to slow down, and you know, just looking out here on the field, it, these officials are going to have to start getting control of this game. There's a lot of chippiness going on, a lot of after the snap activity. You know, Martez Ivy down there, kind of getting reined in. There's a redshirt senior, Mark Thompson. It's like, look, you got to calm down. There's been a lot of away from the ball chippiness between these two teams. And they're going to get Ivy out of the game. That's probably smart. You know, this is a guy that you want to make sure his emotions are contained. We've already seen earlier on in this game, Frederick Johnson coming out of the lineup. There's Thompson. Hey, don't tell me he doesn't have a little shake and bake. Come on, no, big you're fella. Right. You're right. There was one shake and then also a little bit of bacon in there as well. And I, I like watching 24 yeah. run. You know, ball security has been an issue for him throughout his career. But, uh, you know, leadership has an effort, has not. And you see that, yeah, in the offensive backfield, making moves and then punishing would-be tacklers in the secondary with that 240 pounds. I like more than anything else before that carry, getting in his teammate's face, keeping him away from the opponent. You don't need an unsportsmanlike conduct. You don't need something like that happening in a game that's well in hand. Time of possession starting to mount. Big time in favor of Florida. 36 minutes today. Franks nowhere to go. He'll be dropped back at the 47 yard line. That'll be a loss of nine on the play. Well, we mentioned, you know, Felipe Franks and the kind of season he's had. You know, part of the difficulty has been, yeah, he's been in and out of the lineup, started six of nine, played most. He's been a little bit nicked up himself, but protection has been a challenge all year long. One of the worst teams in the conference in keeping their quarterback clean coming into this game. Florida offense had allowed 30 sacks. Part of that's a function of the revolving door of their offensive lineups along their front. 
We haven't mentioned it a lot. The Gators on their third string center with Tyler Jordan in there. There's Thompson. He runs into some white jerseys. Loss of a yard. Clock approaching six minutes to go in this one. Ivy coming back in the game now. Let him cool off. That was smart. Get him out of the game for a little bit. Get your head on straight. Calm down. And then get back into the lineup. Season best, 238 on the ground. You know, this is a team that has struggled to run the football consistently. Worst rushing offense in the conference a season ago, even while they were capable of winning a division title, and it hasn't come easily this year. They've done a good job here tonight. Thompson. He's to midfield and push back. Garrett Marino, first one there. And now Mark Thompson a little slow to get up. And it's fourth. And about 18 coming up for the Gators. But a chance for us to look at Johnny Townsend, who shockingly is not a finalist for the Ray That's, Guy Award. It's just, I don't even know. I'm speechless that a guy like that is not considered for or that award. Well, it's like when J.K. Scott wasn't considered the year he was dominating as a punter. Well, Johnny Townsend averaging 48, over 48 yards a kick. But the committee, matter of fact, the school here called the Ray Guy Award folks and asked why he wasn't on the list. And they said, well, they're more concerned about net punting. Well, he can't go cover people. <laughs> There's a microcosm of the year, right? You got a great player, and even he's not getting recognized. <laughs> Back in Gainesville where the Gators closing in on breaking this five game skid. Of course, one game shy this year. They had a game earlier this year canceled. A look at next year's schedule. Sees them open up against Charleston Southern, Colorado State. Mike Bobo coming to town on the 15th, former Georgia quarterback. And of course, as always, uh, they'll wrap it up with Florida State. There's Idaho in there. Now, Idaho is now next year going to be an FCS team. This, oh, Mary Kate and Ashley. Well, what are we thinking right here? What goes through your head when you got two FCS teams on there? It's, it's like this season all over again. One of those is in a victory is not going to count towards your bowl eligibility. Brad Stewart with a big interception, a true freshman, and another pick by this Gator secondary. Another shot downfield, and you think. Well, maybe if you can't get behind the secondary once again, you know, this is there's a lot of talent on this field still. Hasn't always shown up. But once again, an yet another turnover and a defense that's feasted on those the past two games. Well, you just kind of wonder who's going to be running the show next year for Florida. Is it Scott Frost down at Central Florida? A lot of talk about Chip Kelly out there. Yeah. You know, it's the. There is a cornucopia in advance of Thanksgiving of coaches out there that are really good coaches. And I think that when you look at where this team is, and where this program is, geographically and from a facility standpoint, it's an incredibly attractive job. In fact, the top job out there. Flag as Lemons breaks free. 62 yards if it holds up. Boy, it was untouched. Holding number 65 on the offense. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. Got Wani Taylor over there at left tackle. He's over there next to Martez Ivy. You see Wani here. Now usually he's over at right tackle. That's Stone for Scythe over there right now. And you know, whenever you turn the shoulders of the defender, it's too easy. For the official to throw that flag. They don't even have a defensive line. A lot of times they wave their arms and kind of flail all over the place. Don't need to do that when his shoulders get completely turned. But you know, you, you talk about the coaches, Dave. 
and just where they are. So, so they've got their facilities, an indoor facility. You're in Florida. So there's a ton of recruiting opportunity to be sure. And Randy Shannon mentioned all this is that, look, th there's a lot of young players, a lot of trues, a lot of children on this team. I mean, these guys are brand new to this. That's your future. You're looking at a team that's got a lot of good players where their best football is in front of them. All right, you're not the athletic director, but you make that kind of mundo in real life. So since you make that, you're in the high pay scale area. If you're going to hire a coach, who do you hire here? Who's the guy you want? Well, you know, you look at the guys that are available and the guys that are in the game right now. Well, there's a guy right down the road. What would you say? It's an hour down the road, two hours, whatever it is, <laughs> yeah. depending on traffic. Depends on how you drive, right. Right. You know, if, you, if it's you driving, it's 30 minutes. <laughs> but that guy's... And Scott Frost has put together a really impressive resume in less than two full seasons. And I think you would have to look really closely at that. And has established himself in the state with high school coaches and has reportedly developed a very good relationship with them. That's huge. A guy that understands, you know, kind of the bleeding edge of offense, which I think would be welcomed for a fan base that, desires that you think about will Muschamp. he won what 11 12 games right one season but he did it with defense it was ugly and it seemingly no one was happy around the florida program it's not just winning it's how you win it's the fun and gun of coach spurrier's years and you know to lead the nation in scoring at ucf after an 0 and 12 season go six and six in 2016 and turn it around and, and be undefeated this year and have an opportunity for a conference title. And Scott Frost is really appealing, I think, right now. Speaking of appealing, how about Lemons with the first down? On a third and 19, he picks up 25 yards. This is a back-breaking type of a play on a third and 19, right? You hand the football off, you just want to pick up some yards, kick the ball away. But another flag. Another flag. And that'll be a hold against Florida, I believe. And they're going to back him up again. Holding number 89 on the offense. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay third down. This time Tyree Cleveland. And we mentioned, you know, on perimeter runs, when you get outside, those receivers are going to be asked to block. Not always their strength. She's seeing number 89 right here, sizing him up. See, which am I going to hold? Am I going to hold the right side or am I going to hold right. the left side? You have it your way, man. Which, which Ooh, way do you want to go? Was, you know what? I take that, that, that to me was a little. Yeah, that's iffy. I think we're maybe. How about Lemons, though? He's had these big runs and they keep coming back. <laughs> He's right. getting a heck of a workout today. He look good in the film room, though. Clock down to 153 and counting. Tyreek Hopkins getting some work at running back. It's like an NFL team roster size wise down there on the Gators sideline. Yeah. I mean, it really is. You, you look down there, it's funny because these college sidelines look like preseason games where there's just a million dudes, yeah. everybody's got a jersey. <laughs> And then you get after the final cuts and you look in these NFL sidelines like where is everybody? It's a ghost town. You know, for Florida, you know, just they've hemorrhaged players all season long. It started out with suspensions and it only grew worse with the injuries. And it really compromised their ability to to I think achieve at any high level. Kadarius Tony, by the way, injured earlier in this game. See what his status is next week. Got hit on the knee in the first quarter. And he is their backup quarterback. Just, you know, the, the injury to Malik Zaire just didn't look good. I don't know that we're going to see him. No. no again. It's, I think Malik Zaire's his season is likely over. You know, Tony's injury looked. You know, it didn't look like it was that significant. I mean, a little bit surprised, especially after Felipe Franks looked like he was certainly banged up yeah. after that, after being rolled up on there at the end of the second quarter. But you know, clearly the decision was made that Tony needs to be put in bubble wrap and preserved for the next week. 
Another booming kick by Townsend. Fair catch called for at the 14 yard line. That's a 50 yarder. How about that net return? Yeah, that's, no, no, well, that what was the net on that one, Dave? 50. Yeah. And a flag comes in. Looks like guys getting chippy again with 105 to play. But Johnny, you had our vote, buddy. You're not kidding. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's net punting is that's it's an individual award, right? You know, for the Ray Guy Award. I don't usually see 11 guys go up there to accept the award. All he can do is kick it. He's done a phenomenal job of it. Unsportsmanlike conduct number 19 on the kicking team. 15 yard penalty will be added at the end of the kick. First down. That Come is number on. 19's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul. Come on, Johnny. We're talking about you. There's no need for that. He's frustrated. Right. He's still he's getting out his anger. Yeah, Dude, that'll yeah, get you a flag you gotta, every time. You gotta get your head in front, John. You stick to kicking, brother. You're good at it. And that's what uh, Randy Shannon was looking at the clock saying, why do we need to do that with 105? We don't. You don't need to do right. it. Yeah, but, you know, who knows? Seriously, I mean, he's aware of it. He Surely he knows the kind of season that he's had. Still no excuse for it in a game, especially that's well in hand after a great kick. So for UAB, they will head back to Birmingham, get ready for UTEP, a team that uh, entered the weekend 0 and 10. And if they can pick up a win next week, it would be uh, school record eight victories in this season. A remarkable job by all the Blazers. Bill Clark and company certainly can walk around Birmingham with their heads held very high after this season. Two years without football, their debut in September of this year against Alabama A&M. Got him off and running. Meanwhile, Florida has Florida State next week. Two teams that have had disappointing seasons. A lot of turmoil, a lot of injuries, a lot of stuff going on. But it's still Florida, Florida State. It's still Florida, Florida State. It's not what it used to be. But you can imagine these two fan bases, they certainly want to come away with a victory in that one. Rivalry week always matters. And this was a big win. Randy Shannon and his only head coaching opportunity back here in the swamp, and he gets a resounding victory over UAB. The Gators, 409 yards of offense. They ran 80 plays. They held UAB.